This is News 8 at 5. There's nothing really you can do rather than just, just you, I don't know, reach out for air just for that given time when you're compressed. Absolutely terrifying moments last night for concert goers in Houston. The crowd rushed the stage, killing eight people, including two teenagers, other, dozens of others out there were injured. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price. And I'm Kirsten Holmes. Texas authorities are investigating the deadly stampede at Astro World. That's a Astro World Festival where Travis Scott was performing in front of a pretty big crowd. Yeah, as you can see, people started pushing their way, shoving themselves up to the front. That squeezed everyone together. It created chaos. It created panic. Here's Brittany Ford with the very latest. Victims of the deadly chaos at rapper Travis Scott's Astro World concert were rushed away on stretchers. The crowd began to to compress towards the front of of the stage. That caused some panic, and it started causing some injuries. People began to fall out, uh, become unconscious, and it created additional additional panic. The Friday night stampede broke out after Scott took the stage before a crowd of about 50,000 at a two day music festival in Houston. Everybody started pushing as soon as he started screaming. That's to try and get as close as they can to get a picture. And then it just went to hell from there. Police say at least 11 concert goers were in cardiac arrest. There was a person that fell and Everyone was trying to pick them up, but the crowd was too tight. Now, some families still haven't heard from their loved ones and are coming to this hotel to wait for answers. A source close to the festival tells CBS News that police are looking into reports of a drug spiking incident in a targeted area of the festival. We've heard rumors of, of people injecting some people of, of drugs. So I want to check all that out. Scott released a statement Saturday saying he's absolutely devastated and that the Houston Police Department has his total support as they look into the tragic loss of life. The investigation is likely to focus on safety protocols at the event. Brittany Ford, CBS News, Houston. You know, it's been more than 40 years since the stampede at a concert. Back in 1979, during a concert by The Who, 11 people died and about two dozen were hurt as thousands of fans tried to get into Cincinnati's Riverfront Coliseum. Coming up in the next half hour, we will hear from a Spring Valley man who was trapped in that crowd but managed to get out safely. A kidnapping suspect taken into custody this afternoon after an hours long SWAT standoff. San Diego police say officers responded to reports of a man who had a gun on Rex Avenue in Choyas Creek. Happened around 7 this morning. The man then took off in a van, had a woman in the passenger seat with him. That woman yelling for help. Officers followed him through the city. They used spike strips to stop that vehicle at the intersection of 54th and Lee Streets. The woman was taken into safety while the man later identified as Adrian Brooks stayed inside the vehicle. San Diego police say Brooks did finally give up several hours later and was taken into custody without incident. After months of back and forth to get bipartisan support, President Joe Biden says he is elated at the infrastructure bill passed late last night. The president is calling it a monumental step forward that would create millions of jobs. But how will that bill impact San Diegans? News 8's Heather Hope gets answers from a local congresswoman. Stephen Kirsten, with so many aspects to this massive infrastructure bill, many San Diegans want to know how will it impact their roads and their daily life? Well, Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs offers insight and gives a timeline. There are so many amazing things in this bill for us in San Diego. Breaking down the big bipartisan infrastructure bill, Democrat Congresswoman Sarah Jacobs, who represents much of central San Diego, says the trillion dollar investment in roads, bridges and transportation could start to take shape locally sooner than we think. One of the things that's really exciting about this bill is actually it gives a lot of discretionary funding to the Department of Transportation so that they're able to get money out the door quickly. The motion is adopted. Taking much longer and well into the night. Progressive Democrats got on board voting to pass the infrastructure bill after party leaders promised the larger social spending measure would get a vote no later than the week of November 15th. We've always said we need to get both bills done, and tonight we have an agreement that will get both bills done. 13 Republicans voted for the bipartisan bill, which passed the Senate back in August. But after months of delay, Democrats found themselves deadlocked in disagreement. 
There were a few hiccups along the way. The process was a little bit messy, but it was exactly how legislation is supposed to work. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a last minute decision to move forward with a $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan alone, making it one bill down and now a new plan for passing the Build Back Better bill. Once in a generation investment that's going to create millions of jobs. President Joe Biden's plan is to update broadband service, lower cost for working families, and replace lead water pipes. How long have we been talking about that? It's a gigantic issue. But lawmakers against the bill say Congress can do better. Republican Congressman Daryl Issa says the bill doesn't build anything, it destroys. In a statement Issa wrote, this may be the biggest and most expensive bill in history, but not one line on any page will solve this administration's nonstop crises, nor help the Americans victimized by them. It will make it even worse. Jacob says California agencies will be able to submit requests to the Department of Transportation to decide which projects best align with the broader goals to get started. And so I think in the next year or so, people will start seeing the effects of this uh, infrastructure spending. It is a 10-year bill, so um, it is money that is meant to be spread out over 10 years. Now the focus will be on the week of November 15th for a vote on the Build Back Better bill, which includes an investment in child care. Heather Hope, News 8. All right, Heather, thank you. It was a beautiful start to the weekend, but yeah. some cool and possibly wet days are ahead. Let's check in with meteorologist Sean Stiles. He joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Things changing a little bit out there, Sean. Yeah, Steve, you know, it took a little bit of time for the clouds to kind of break free from the uh, sunshine along the coastline. We did see that come out, and as we look towards the west from Otai Mountain here, we can see that marine layer already rolling back in. And, oh, by the way, uh, daylight saving time is uh, giving it up and tonight is the last night of daylight saving time. So get out there and watch the sunset and say goodbye to it. Here's a look at that marine layer as it eventually burned off along the coastline, but we still saw some cool temperatures because of that. And looking at what we can expect here, this trough over the Pacific Northwest, which is bringing rain to Northern California, will deepen and give us some patchy drizzle and clouds up into say Wednesday morning, then Santa Ana starts to build back in. So some cooler temperatures over the next couple days will stay below average. And that lasts right on through the mid part of the work week, the first half of the mid part of the work week. The second half, we see that Santa Ana come in and start to warm things up. But as you can see, temperatures stay below average over the next couple days. And then after that, we start to see much warmer conditions. I'll explain how the high pressure is coming in and what that means. All right, shall see you in a few minutes. Check this out. Hundreds of skydivers took to the skies in Oceanside today for a fundraiser to help veterans who are struggling with PTSD. More than 6,000 veterans take their own lives every year. A local veteran says events like this one helped him while he was struggling with mental health. I had a, you know, a, a small bout with, uh, you know, thoughts and and now it's a, it's a it's a beautiful day. I'm glad to be here. I love life and it's uh, it's a great experience now. A 21 gun salute was held in honor of the veterans who took their lives in 2020. San Diegans are honoring and celebrating members of our military this weekend at the Broadway Pier during Fleet Week San Diego. There are tours of Navy and U.S. Coast Guard ships, and you can check out other military equipment and talk with the operators. There's also going to be flyover, skydiving, search and rescue demos, and music for you. This event is free, open to the public, and it wraps up tomorrow. Harvey Milk was honored in a big way today in San Diego. The Navy christened and launched its latest ship, the USNS Harvey Milk, at 10 this morning. Milk, a slain gay rights leader, served in the Navy during the Korean War as a diving officer. He later became the first openly gay elected official in California when he was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1977. And here at CBS 8, we want to send love to our active military veterans, and active military and our veterans, and thank them for their service. We'll feature pictures in our newscasts of military members that have a special place in the hearts of San Diegans all next week surrounding Veterans Day. Now, if there is a military member you would like to thank, just text their photo to us at 858-571-8888. Be sure to include that person's name, rank, and service.